Hey everybody, Thomas here again um, with a quick update video. Um, this one is going to go over the results um, from this last strength phase that I just finished up a little while ago. Um, so we'll go over kind of what I was hoping to get out of it, what actually happened, and kind of my, my takeaways uh, from it. So right off the bat, um, we'll talk about this more in depth later, but I was clearly um, overtraining, uh, specifically overtraining my fingers during this bit. I was pushing it pretty hard um, up to like, you know, four uh, finger workouts a week. And um, I, you could, it's, it was pretty classic. Like you could see a nice, um, you know, increase up to uh, the first couple of weeks up through that. And then like a plateau and then a bit of a, a decline. But anyway, um, we'll do the assessment, but overall things went pretty well, but the fingers were the, the thing uh, that, were, that were rough. Um, the other bit that I was going to kind of measure against in terms of how successful this was were uh, the kilter board problems that I set for, set for myself. Um, and that's back in the assessment video. Uh, but I had a few uh, kilter board problems, some kind of power specific, some strength specific. Um, and so I went back and kind of tried the, the strength ones again, uh, just to see. I didn't make a huge amount of progress, but they definitely felt a lot better. A lot of these um, strength kilter board problems that I was doing were really shouldery and body tensiony, and um, those aspects of the problems felt um, quite a bit better. Uh, I still, like I said, kind of, I still failed mostly in the same areas. Um, got a little bit further on a couple of them, um, but they feel a lot more possible. So anyway, I will go back and, and try them again. To you know, it was just a quick session, so um, it was nice to have a little bit of progress even with that. Um, outdoor climbing. I've been doing a little bit more sport climbing actually, um, because you know summertime is a bit warmer, and uh, we've been finding some cooler sport climbing areas, and that has been going pretty well. Again, it's kind of hard to measure just because they're you know trying mostly new stuff, um, so it's hard to go back and kind of compare what, how I felt before. Um, but I certainly felt pretty strong, especially uh, shoulder stuff and body tension stuff felt really good um, when climbing with other people outside. Um, and then the workout progression um, that I was looking for, uh, like it says here, other than my finger strength progression, um, I, I felt like I did a pretty good job of showing steady improvement um, throughout the uh, the time. And I wasn't really holding back either. You know, sometimes it's easy to like make yourself feel like you're you're progressing by kind of holding back and and like feather bagging early, uh, and so you can. Um, you know, constantly make strides, even if you're not trying that much harder. But anyway, uh, these exercises that I was doing um, actually did show a decent amount of improvement, and I felt like I was I was trying pretty hard. Um, so next, um, sorry. Uh, so going over the next bits, the most improved uh, exercises you know, during this time were definitely my weighted pull-ups and my front lever work. Um, the weighted pull-ups, like I said before, showed pretty steady improvement and it was always, you know, working pretty close to max. Um, and that that is probably what made my shoulders feel so much better uh, during this time. And then uh, the, the lever is just, this I find, just kind of the more time I put into them. It doesn't need to be very much per session, but just doing it a little bit more often, I start to feel uh, that kind of posterior chain. Uh, for me, it feels a lot more limiting the posterior chain part of the lever than anything else. And that, um, you know, if I'm hitting it more frequently, uh, it starts to, to kind of firm up pretty well. So uh, those are definitely the, the big ones. Um, the least improved were weirdly uh, weighted lockoffs. I don't know if it's just me, but I, I always feel like I do um, a pretty bad job or I'm pretty weak on this kind of long duration, like isometric stuff. I always feel like my shoulder is gonna like dislocate, you know, when I'm just hanging there, it's just like gradually sagging a little bit more and a little bit more. But anyway, that kind of stuff is always hard for me. So uh, maybe it's just motivation too. But uh, so those were, were great. And then, you know, bench, like I'm not a very strong bench presser, but and this was mostly like a 
an ancillary exercise anyway, so it's not I'm not too bummed about it. But uh, it did notice it was tough for me to to really push. I guess that's probably one of those um, negative bits about uh, working out by yourself most of the time is you know you don't have a hey, you don't have a spotter. You know I had a, a safety bar like so I wasn't worried about hurting myself. But you know you also lose a bit of that motivation um, and and whatnot when you're working out alone. Um, and then some of the exercises that I had on the list were a bit, like it says here, a bit too nuanced uh, to really have measurable progress, but they started to feel, um, you know, quite a bit better. So, you know, stuff like, I don't know, handstand push-ups, it, you know, it's hard to like add in an extra rep there um, when you're doing it, but you can start to feel, uh, you know, a little bit more snappy when you're doing it, and, you know, like you're, you're not just uh, struggling to get through. Um, okay, so the actual results. So I did uh, the assessment afterward, and um, we can see here what, what's going on. So the finger strength stuff first, uh, I did you know make a tiny bit of improvement. The reason it's like a pound off here is I changed my my weight hanging system. I made a little uh, thing to make it a little bit easier to hang uh, the weight. So that's why the the weights are a little bit off. Was I, I wound up um, just changing that. Uh, but they're essentially the same as last time, um, and it was a struggle to get to, to this number. Like it felt real hard. So I think that is a pretty clear indicator that um, I was overtraining. And the the thing that's frustrating about it, or you know, one of the big indicators of the overtraining was that during my training phase, you know, after about a couple of weeks in, when I was doing uh, very similar things to the assessment, so like micro hangs. Uh, sloper holds and one arm training. Uh, my numbers during like a, an actual training session were much better than this. You know, like I was hanging nine, ten seconds on the uh, the micro crimps. Um, I felt pretty solid on the forty five degree slopers. You know, it was probably like three or four seconds. And then uh, it's hard to know with the, the edge size because I was using a fifteen mil edge. But I felt there were a couple of times where I felt you know really really solid on that on that edge and. Um, it felt like a weird combination of conditions, and maybe it was more my skin condition than like the actual temperature. Um, but it felt like friction became an issue uh, with some of this stuff, and it was like a real struggle just to to maintain that kind of half grip. Um, but uh, luckily, the other stuff did. You know, I, I showed pretty decent improvements. So, like the front lever uh, got that up a couple seconds, and it felt really good. Sometimes, you know, it feels like you're about to die when you're um, Hold, trying to hold that front lever, uh, but that that felt pretty solid. And then the one arm pull up felt um, much better. And again, I bet I, I probably could have tried a little bit harder and done a full body weight one. But um, you know, I got up to it during the assessment. I gave myself a couple chances just so I didn't um, tire out too much. But uh, you know, three pounds subtracted from body weight was the the max there, and then the ninety degree lock off I got a little bit better, but it's probably more just willpower and knowing what number I was trying to reach and whatnot. Uh, canvassing didn't really get any better. Uh, that was kind of expected just because I hadn't been working any power. Um, and then the other thing I'm super excited about is the flexibility increase. So I've been putting in. I would say a lot of time is more just like a lot of attention to trying to stretch every day. Um, you know, it's not that difficult, uh, but you do have to carve out a bit of time to do it. And I'm, I'm happy that I'm seeing some progress because that will just kind of motivate me to, to try even more so I can finally get a little bit more flexible. So anyway, that has been working pretty well. I haven't really been doing anything crazy. You know, it's been doing just kind of forward folds and, and uh, straddle stretching like when I'm resting in between sets. Um, the one thing I'll say that was helpful for, especially for the forward fold, is to do like weighted. Uh, so I would, I would hold like a 35 pound dumbbell and hang there. Um, and that was nice just because uh, it meant I didn't have to try really hard to, to stretch a little bit more or like, you know, bounce or, or pull on a band or anything like that. So that was an, uh, a pretty effective way to improve um, the, all that hamstring flexibility if you're looking for something like that. Um, okay, so the big thing for the takeaways was, like I've mentioned many times, I was definitely overtraining my fingers. So uh, four workouts per week, I was basically doing 
Um, you know, and you can go back and, and look at the the initial strength video. I was doing two hangboard workouts a week and two no hang workouts a week, uh, and that was just uh, too much. So I should have stuck with just three three workouts in in the week to give myself a little bit more time. And again, um, I should have. Um, I fell into the trap of treating uh, the, especially the finger training uh, workouts as performance. Like there was one day where I kind of peaked in that week two that I mentioned where it felt really good. And I, I made a big leap in terms of how much I was, I was hanging. And I think I just took it a little bit too far that week. And then when I felt a little bit worse the next day, I was, I was really bummed about it. And I tried to, just get back to that, um, to that hang. And I think I might've just, you know, tired myself out more. And then each subsequent week when I was either not progressing or getting a little bit worse, um, it was just very, uh, demotivating, you know, you're, you're just thinking that something's wrong. Uh, you're just trying desperately to get back to that, that former number and just, you know, getting all that stuff out of your head, I think would have been, um, would have been a little bit more, um, advantageous for me in terms of this. So anyway, uh, it was good though, because I found my kind of tipping point in terms of how much I can train my fingers in a week. Um, the other big thing that was uh, uh, helpful to know is I, I switched it up and I was curious how training on a, a smaller edge, a 15 millimeter edge would be for these, uh, specifically for the um, one hand, one arm hangs and for the no hangs. Uh, for the no hangs, they were, they were fine. You know, it was it didn't feel that much different. Obviously, I couldn't do as much weight, um, but it, it felt very similar to the the you know bigger edges. But for the one arm hangs, it was interesting. It felt like a lot of the times my shoulder and my elbow were kind of the limiting factor, and it wound up giving me a little bit of kind of niggly injuries or just things didn't feel quite right um, with that kind of stuff. So sometimes I'd be hanging. My fingers would feel okay, but you know there'd be something kind of weird in my shoulder or my elbow, and it would probably it would just make me kind of not want to try really hard. So anyway, I think 15 mils, at least for me, is too small, and I I really like the 18 um, to 22 millimeter range. Um, so treating kind of the like beast maker middle edge as the very upper limit, and then going down to to 20 or you know if you if you have some random uh, hangboard with an 18 mil edge that, uh, but anyway, that was helpful. It was an experiment. You know, I, I got the, um, useful results, not really the results I was hoping for, but, um, it, but now I can use that moving forward. Um, the other thing I found is that the no hang training, and I've been kind of continuing that into the, this power phase, but the no hang training training seems much more consistent in terms of improvement. Um, with the one-armed hanging, I found that, um, kind of like I mentioned, there are a lot more factors at play. So sometimes my shoulder would feel tired from climbing, you know, the day or two days before, and that might become kind of a limiting factor. Um, or like a like I was saying, an elbow issue, or even just like, you know, not getting the body position right or whatever. Um, but the so anyway, that that seemed a little bit more volatile. But the no hang training felt pretty. Um, you know, consistent week after week. And I was able to make um, very steady, like kind of this linear improvement over all of that. So I'm going to continue with that and um, see, you know, at the end of this, I'm curious how, how much that will uh, affect the, the final results. But um, it feels like something I want to keep in the rotation for sure. Um, it's also just very quick uh, to, to add in to a, a workout. You know, you, you're at the gym, you just, do your, your normal climbing and whatever, and then you can go down and do a no hang workout pretty quickly because you don't need all that much recovery time uh, in between sets. So I really like that idea that um, kind of Eve Gravel talked about, about training his fingers pretty much every day, but not very hard every day. And I feel like the no hangs are a good way to kind of give them that short uh, but effective stimulus that you want to do. Um, and it's so much easier to measure, you know, obviously if you've ever measured your body weight, you fluctuate so much day to day, um, you know, depending on what time of day it is, what you've eaten before, you know, all that stuff. It's amazing how much you, your body weight goes up and down. 
And that can, you know, obviously affect your your actual body weight hanging, but clearly like the, the no hanging, you know exactly how much weight is on there. Um, and it, it doesn't change, hopefully, unless something strange happens to gravity. But, um, and then the final thing was during the strength phase, it felt like the balance between climbing and lifting was a little bit better. Um, I was doing fewer uh, sets and definitely fewer exercises as well. Um, so it gave me more time uh, to climb. Uh, and, you know, obviously I didn't need to dedicate as much time in the actual weight room. It felt like during the hypertrophy phase, I was just in there uh, in the weight room doing random stuff, doing supersets of a bunch of stuff forever. Um, and it took up a bunch of time and energy and i mean it worked it was it was effective it seems but um it would it it felt a little bit more felt like more of a chore you know to do the hypertrophy stuff than the strength stuff just because you can you know you want to rest a little bit more you want to give it your all uh and you can limit your exercises to the the stuff that you really care about so anyway that was the uh strength phase um, again, a bit disappointing on the finger portion of the assessment, but hopefully I can modify the power phase uh, to avoid that overtraining. And so we can, uh, by the end, when I do the final assessment, hopefully be recovered from that overtraining and, and we'll see the actual, you know, final results. So uh, thanks for watching. Next time we'll go over the plan for the power phase and then um, it will be the wrap up after that. Once it's all done, we'll kind of see how this works. All right. Thanks, everybody. See you next time. Bye-bye.